Hello and welcome to the first virtual school assembly of the summer term. There's nothing like having children for making you face your own limitations. When my daughter used to get home from school and wanted advice on her homework, it fast became uh, a knowledge lottery as to whether her father could offer her anything useful at all. Okay, maths, science, geography, not too bad, as long as the science doesn't veer too much towards the biology side. English, possible, I suppose, but nothing too technical. French, definitely risky, the enthusiasm rapidly outstripping any pretense to grammatical accuracy. And then there's the other subjects, history, music, IT, drama. If she wants any help, best ask someone else. Depressingly, despite all my attempts to become a Renaissance man, my area of confidence remains stubbornly narrow. Undoubtedly, I was a casualty at the English school system, described by the novelist C.P. Snow as either arts-based or science-based. My literary side has never fully recovered. In schools, we worry a lot about that. It's one of the reasons that schools claim to have a balanced curriculum, a good range of subjects, and it was one of the reasons that brought about the national curriculum and AS levels for that matter too. Breadth matters. It helps us all to see and to learn and to appreciate alternative views. It's not just the range of subjects that matters. It's also the approach to inquiry, to learning. Scientific research is driven by a passion to know more about the world, but you'll only learn something new if you are willing to have received wisdoms, those facts that you already accept, overturned, not just confirmed as true. Without a willingness to be surprised, disturbed even, and above all, not to be scared off, you can't get new knowledge. Before Watson and Crick, there was DNA. Before Newton, there was gravity and momentum. But that also means that scientists have to live with provisionality. New facts emerge, new theories try to make sense of them. Old theories crumble. That doesn't mean that every idea that comes along is equally valuable, but it does mean that we have to be prepared to listen to different ideas and possibilities. And that can be quite a threatening prospect. It's not just science, of course. Religious believers must also be willing to have their understanding of God deepened and broadened, challenged and changed by new insights. Insights that may well initially both surprise and disturb. But why should we fear discovering new things about God any more than we would the world? A programme on television recently suggested that we'd be better off without any religion at all because religion closes minds and allows otherwise good people to do bad things. After all, there's lots of evidence for that in today's world. On the other hand, last century it was ideologies like Nazism and Communism that led basically good people to do terrible things, whereas some of the most stirring acts of selflessness and charity were religiously inspired. In a world where the values of freedom and tolerance are daily under attack, there's a real need for everyone to overcome dogmatism, that unwillingness to listen to and try to understand, and the refusal to live with provisionality whether it's religious or not. What we see through the microscope and the telescope might be all that there is to know, or it may not. Religion invites us to keep our minds open. Thank you very much for listening.